development experience, which translates well to understanding and leadership of developer teams. He has a vast, he has vast market research skill sets for providing insights into product requirements. He's skilled at interpersonal communication and the ability to fortify relationships with stakeholders, clients, and personnel. Andrew is a strong team management and project management talent while leading within specified budgets and, and time requirements. He's fluent in English, this is the best part, French, Spanish, and has proficiency in writing and reading German, Italian, and Portuguese. So ladies and gentlemen, you can please use your clap, uh, clap emoji to welcome Andrew to the group. Andrew has been here before and is back once again. He promised and Andrew is there fulfilling his promise. And yeah, Andrew is working us through how to strategically position ourselves to his the next interview session, to his <laughs> the next interview that we'll find ourselves. So, Andrew, good evening. You have the floor. Thank you, Moses. Appreciate it. Although, um, would sooner not be introduced by my LinkedIn profile. <laughs> uh, Sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, for Andrew. Sorry about that. Oh no, that's fine. I go. I I go by both. Uh, okay. That's that's perfectly fine. And but and Andy is perfectly cool. Um, yeah. You should, actually, that's how I know the difference in people who know me very well and people who look me up. <laughs> Those who look me up call me Andrew. Like, ah, I don't know. <laughs> so, how is everyone doing today? Oh, okay. I know it's been a long day. So, I um, really appreciate you still taking out some time here today. Um, really love doing this whenever I'm called to because um, I think we have an, a, a growing product ecosystem here in Nigeria and uh, anything any of us can do to help strengthen that ecosystem that community uh the better and people in product is doing amazing things so always happy to be part of it um yes so and in fact you know when we last spoke we, what we were talking about but i guess uh, moses we never really got around to scheduling it was i was actually hoping to do a series of these um you know prep sessions where we are the whole idea is looking at the entire um hiring process from you know cvs cover letters to the actual interview case studies um negotiation all of that i still would like to do that um but i think i would just need a bit more prep time to be fully prepared for it um i just found out what i was doing this yesterday so um I think today what we can do is focus on the interview, interview prep specifically, and then Moses, maybe let's coordinate so that we can take a few more of these interview preps, the next few, to sort of go through a bit more of a series at each part of the um, of the funnel. If, if, does that uh, make sense? Uh, yeah, that makes sense. And if you don't mind, we can also like trade it out to have someone who you like use like as an example, right, for the whole of this for the whole of the um series if you don't mind but we can have that discussion outside of here thank you cool 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 thank you thank you all right so i think so for today i think the best use of the time i know we don't i don't think we have a candidate do we um for today's one and uh, no we don't have a candidate for today. okay cool no problem no problem at all so i think what i would i think what i what we could do if that's okay with the, with it with with the with the house is we could um do sort of like a q a where you guys are uh, you know give me some of the more confusing or difficult or problematic interview questions you faced and then i kind of help walk you through the way um yeah, a, a hypothetical hiring manager would would expect that question to be answered. And said, "I'll be speaking obviously one for myself, 
as a hiring mm -hmm. manager, I do a lot of hiring and I sit on a lot of panels, both for Founders Factory Africa and for the startups we invest in, and then also in my previous roles as well. Um, I've been hiring product managers for the last, um, I want to say, 15, 16 years. Um, but beyond that, I also obviously um, interact with a lot of other hiring managers, and I, I hope I can bring you a perspective about how they think about this because obviously i'm not probably not going to be the person you are interviewing with uh, i so i don't want to just tell you what works for me i want to try and tell you what works for the market in general so that said um i don't know maybe we can just pop some questions in the chat or people can raise hands moses i'll i'll let you um coordinate and moderate that in whatever way you think is the most sensible um, my job would just be to answer questions and I'll also try and make it, I, I, I want us to make it as interactive as possible. So I will also be asking questions back and, you know, let, let's all talk. Okay. I, I yeah. don't want you guys to just be sitting down while I'm just talking at you. Um, you are all professionals. So, um, let's, I want to, I want to respect your time. So I want us to have a conversation. So, yeah. All right. So I, I think we'll just like raise up our ends. If if you have any question that you think has been bugging you uh or you'd love and need to like answer of course in line with um interviews um you can please raise your hands i don't see if you are shy use the comment section because i'm not expected to be shy <laughs> where well, you can please just raise your hands i will going through the names now to see so if you have any question around interviews, please raise your hands and I would call you. Can't see no hands. Okay, Chioma. I think I'll start with Choma, then we'll take Chin, Chin Yim next. I hope I'm not more your name. By the time you're mute, please tell me the correct pronunciation. So Choma, please, you can go first. Uh, thank you. Hi. Hi, Mrs. Hi. Um, So I'm asking specifically for people that just, people that are transitioning into product management and are trying to get Entry level roles and the African teams. Typically, like what what we should expect in interviews, because we might have not had one before. The likely questions that can come up, how we can answer them, like it a, a a typical flow of an entry level interview questions, likely questions for a product, an entry level product management role. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Chuma. I, Andrew, do you want to take that now? Or we hear what Chim has to say, then you take it together. Yeah, let, let me, let, let's hear the next question and, and I'll All take right. them. Chim, I'm sorry about oh, what It's Chim. Chim. Yes. Hey, good evening. Um, I, my question is, how would you answer a question about I mean, if they asked you how to build, how would you build, make this product a better product? How would you, what structure would you use to answer that question? Okay. Uh, all right. Um, Mo, you can go next. Good evening, everyone. Sorry, this Hi, is Muiwa um, Oni. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, so my question will be, if an interviewer uh, asks and says something like, um, how do you relate analytics to your day-to-day -day activities? How do you relate, uh, how analytical you are you and how do you relate analytics to what you do as a product manager? Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Emo. Got that. Um, and I think I'm still answering then if others have questions so can, can you guys hear me oh right, yeah, yeah sorry i was trying to unmute okay so um 
I will have to come back to that analytics question um, just for a bit more um, specificity, but let me go as you answer the first two. So, um, Trauma, your question was, what kind of questions should an entry-level uh, candidate, uh, candidate for an entry-level product management job uh, expect? So, before I answer, let me just say that most of the time, people transitioning into product management, only not say most, but in transitioning to product management, the path that has the highest success rate is when the person is making an internal transition, that is transitioning within their, the company they already have a job in from one department into product. That's oftentimes the path that has the least resistance. It's often quite difficult to get those entry-level jobs, as many of you can attest in our current market. And, but I think what I found, so let me talk about, um, so that means, because if you want to get into an entry level job um, as a product manager, it's what they are looking for at that point is they, they are aware that you've never really worked as a PM, um, not directly. So what they're looking at is your qualifications, perhaps you've gone and done some courses, etc. They know you don't have any hands on direct experience in a in a role where your job title was product manager so what we what the what a reasonable um hiring manager will now be looking for uh, is well this person do they have the core skills that are transferable into product management okay i've seen the qualifications no problem now do they have the core skills so you can expect questions well first of all you expect the normal, what might be fluff questions like, why do you want to become a product manager? Why do you want to get into product management? Um, you will hear questions like, why do you think you are, you would make a good product manager? Uh, you will hear questions like, um, you know, what do you think are the top three or top five skills a product manager should have? And do you, what, what is your evidence that you have them, right? Uh, you will hear if, they, if, if the hiring manager is still interested and is deciding to prove, you will hear them ask questions like, um, you know, again, the more reasonable or the more serious um, hiring managers will sort of now steer the conversation towards your actual experience in whatever things you were doing before that were in product management. So they may ask, okay, so for example, they, they want to know how you are at a, as a communicator. They may now ask you that, can you tell us about a situation in this job? And they're looking at your resume. In this job you just did or the previous job or whatever, can you tell us about a situation where you had to work with multiple stakeholders across different departments and you had to sort of steer a project and use communication to get um, get things done. What were your difficulties and how did you overcome them? Um, or they may ask you a question around, well, can you talk, tell us, talk us through a time where you had to um, get different stakeholders again in different teams to get something done, even though you did not have any direct control or authority over them? How did you, how did you get that done, et cetera? Um, depending, on, depending on where you're coming into product management from, you may, uh, you, may, you may get some questions that border on the technical. So obviously, if you're coming in as a developer, and uh, you, you're a developer that wants to become a product manager, you will now get questions around, well, how have you worked with product managers in, in the past um, where, the, you know, um, what do you think? Where do you think the role of product manager starts and stops, and the other roles of the other team members begin? How do you collaborate, and how do you envisage what are the things you want to bring to the table coming from that side? If you're not coming from a tech um, team at all, say you're coming from sales or from marketing, or you know, which are on that great areas where you see people coming to product management. Um, you will get asked questions oftentimes of that are trying to prove how will this person manage 
in this new, very agile, iterative environment that is the world of product management. So those are kind of some of the things that you should expect to hear in an entry level, um, in an entry level situation. And then also you you will hear questions that really are about figuring out if this person is capable of learning on the job. And if you're not hearing these types of questions I just listed for you, then you ought to be a bit concerned. Because again, the interview is not just about the company trying to figure out if they should employ you. Interview, um, ideally, should also be about you figuring out if you want to work there. And so at entry level, these are the questions that let you know that this is a company that will that knows what it expects of you and is going to be going to try to develop you. And that's what you should be looking out for at the entry level, not just a place where you answer the name product manager, but um they will come, you're coming, expectations are are mis misaligned. Um, so that's the first question. And later on, I'll be happy to answer any follow-ups from you, Chama, in that regard. Then the next one was um the next one was from um um Chien, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh please, sorry, just um remind me the question. Sorry, I think I so, that. Um, she was she was asking how you would um structure what structure would you prefer? Um what answering structure would you prefer if um you had an interview we that how would they improve a product? Oh yeah, so how yes, would yes. You, yeah, yeah, so all right, okay. So yeah, that, that's um so <laughs> that one eh. So here's the truth about that question. That question, there is never a there's no single correct answer, right? It's not about what you come up with, it's the how you get there, right? Or again, let me rephrase that's if you are in the hands of a reasonable and marginally intelligent hiring manager. If you are in the hands of a hiring manager who just went online to look for ants questions to ask you, then maybe they are like, hey, let me see if they're here, if they give the same answer that I saw on a uh, product school, or let me see if they give the same answer that I saw in, on, in learning, then that's when you're in trouble. But if you are dealing with a halfway intelligent hiring manager that just wants to see how you think, that's what this question is about. And there, the answer should ought to be, first of all, and this is my rule of thumb, and I've, I've used it in every time I've been asked this question, and it has never gone wrong, and I've used it, and I've used it anytime I've asked this question, and I've never gone wrong with a candidate. Always start by prefacing that the best way to, develop, to find out how to improve a product isn't for the product manager to bring up their own ideas, but rather for the product manager to first find out what the customers are complaining about. What are the customers' pain points with the current product? That's the, that's the first starting point. Now, if it happens that it's a product that you use, or if it's a product that you know people who use it, and so you have some understanding of those customers, that's the time to show it. Oh, I know that, for example, People with Duolingo, Duolingo people don't think that it's um, conversational enough, um, that, that how it's being thought is conversational enough, or um, the owl is terrorizing them and they're tired of trying to keep up the streak, it's causing anxiety. You, maybe you, you can say things like that, that show the interviewer, okay, you are starting this thing from a place of already knowing something about the product and what the customers think about it. And then from there, you now say, well, seeing these are the problems, then maybe these are the kind of things that I will try. And then the, when I try these things, this is what success would look like. These are the metrics I would measure. And if, if, if those metrics are not moving, then I'll try this instead. That's one way to answer it, if you know something about the product. If you don't know anything about the product, right? Then you, of course, to preface it by saying, hey, look, ideally, I would want to first talk to the customers and understand what they hate about the product, what's worrying them, what are their pain points, etc. But since we don't know that, since we don't have that, then all I can do is look at what I know or see about the product. And it seems like A, B, C, D are things that are not great about the product or are off about the product. Um, this is because one, from my experience with other products, um, this is these things are normally um, a problem. 
or it, when I compare it to its competitors in the same space, they seem to have this and these competitors seem to be doing better, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So based on that, if I were to improve the product, I would now go X, Y, Z. So going back to your question and now using this to create a structure, here's what the structure is. No matter what the product is, always start this question, you always start your answer by pointing out that under normal circumstances, you do you the best way to find out how to improve a product is to find out what the customers are complaining about in the product, where they're having what their pain points are, what their points of friction. That's always your first, the first part of your answer. Then the second part of your answer depends on whether you know the product or you don't know the product. Or, or rather, if you know something about what the customers are saying about the product, or whether you don't. If you know something about the customers are saying about the product, like if you are a customer yourself or a user yourself, or you know them, that's the time to show that knowledge. And so you now the next thing you say is, I know from experience as a user or knowing from users I have spoken to or things I've read on Twitter or whatever it is, customers, users often complain about ABC. So that's now part two of your answer. Then part three of your answer is, um, is, um, Part three of your answer would now be a you add also if you know the competitors you now add a competitor analysis and say well this is how competitors are solving that problem for customers and um or nobody is solving that none of the competitors are solving that problem right now then part four is okay based on that based on this problem i know and based on what the competitors are doing and based on my own experience in the past or seeing um how others have solved similar problems or how this then this is my solution or my suggestion for how this product can be improved then the next thing you must add is but i know that this is probably not correct because most times whatever our first idea for improving the product is not correct so what i would do to make to how we would test the success criteria where we would measure maybe time in app or drop-offs or increased usage, increased active usage, whatever it is that we're going to measure as a success criterion, then that's what we're going to, so you, you state that clearly, and then that's your answer. If on the other hand, I'm going back to step two, if you don't know anything about the customers, but you do know the product, what you now talk about there is, this is what I've seen of the product, this is my comparison of the product to its other competitors, and this is what I think is missing from the product. These are the things that I think will probably get in the way of a customer. You form in your head a persona of the ideal customer. Maybe talk to the panel about that, who that person is, and what they would expect from the product. And then based on that pain point you've created, now make a suggestion for a solution, and then the rest continues as is. So that's, to me, the ideal structure for answering that question. Um, yeah, and again, I'm ready to take follow-ups on that um, after after this. So now the third question on analytics. Uh, I think I am not sure that that question would be asked by a an interviewer because the question is basically asking, you know, how comfortable are you with analytics? And the answer to that is, well, very comfortable. You know, uh, yes, I'm. I love analytics. You know, I I think the only thing I love more than analytics is my my son, right? And you know, that's the end of the of the question, um, of the answer. But I think maybe to modify that a bit, uh, perhaps instead um, you would probably be asked uh, a question along the lines of, um, for example, what analytics tools are you comfortable with using? Um, maybe someone will ask you what's, in your opinion, in what way does this analytics tool, um, is this analytics tool better than this other one in what ways is mixed panel superior to google analytics for example in your opinion or if you use if you're familiar with both in what in what cases do you use one or the other or somebody might ask you um something like uh you know something about yeah i think those are the kind of questions you would get or something I, 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 along the lines of well maybe they'll give you a sort of a, a problem example and say well how would you apply analytics here to um to solve this and what would you be measuring and and how etc 
but I think you you would you would need to have a more specific question than that. So yeah, those are my my answers. I'm happy to either take follow ups or new questions. On the All right, Andrew, this is this is a lot. I, I think you can get, please get a glass of water. Thank you so much, Andrew, for those lucid explanations. Um, I have a follow up question though. Well, let me take the up away first. Um, hi, the up away. Your hands have been raised for quite some time. Yeah. Okay. Um. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrew. Um. This is sort of a follow up question on the um question about people transitioning from other rooms, right? We have like for someone who is transitioning, of course, there are people like you are competing with others who have like more knowledge base in product management that they are more grounded for someone who is just like trying to take a risk and just dumble you to it how would you say we should um like sort of stand out from the competition how do we stand out in the competition while answering the questions that you shared that would be asked for um those transitioning that's my question thank you How to stand out, that's very important. And in fact, um, I think Moses, that's really going to be the core, um the core theme at the at this of the theme at the core of this series I would want to do with interview prep. It's gonna be about how to stand out because through across most of the funnel, that's the biggest problem you have. I like I give the example, I I was I hired product managers for Founders Factory, our Lagos office. So for FFA, we, for those who may not know, we have offices in Lagos, Johannesburg, Nairobi, and, and London. And we're now opening one in Cairo. And so my team, um, I, I manage um, the product management team, the design team, and the engineering team. And so my team members are scattered all over They're in all these offices. Up until this year, I was the only member of the product teams here in lagos so all my everybody that's reporting to me is in other places i never see their faces until i travel so um i finally hired product managers here in nigeria in lagos and when i opened the job listing uh within um three days we had 600 applications and yeah it was really that's really it. yeah Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, now it took me forever because I, I've, I made a commitment to myself um, a long time ago when I was struggling to get my first, um, you know, job that was, well, over almost, well, 25 years ago. But I, uh, I made a promise to myself that whenever I am hiring, I will read every CV that is submitted and I will not i will go through every single one so it took me forever to get through that but like most hiring managers can't make that commitment and um so standing out becomes very very important so to your question specifically standing out in the process now obviously um i think number one thing is play to your strengths now we say that um product management is at the who can tell me you know they say that you know you know the, the venn diagram you know let me let me quickly draw that right quick uh like i said i want to make this interactive it's not just me talking so of course i'm sure you've all seen this three piece venn diagram for product management where they say product management is at the intersection of these three things um can anyone tell me what those three things are or any one of these things you can raise your hand or you can write it in the chat but what are the three things that we say Product management is at the intersection of. Let me talk. Here, please go ahead. Um, we have business, um, um, software development, or so UI UX. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. Does everyone agree? If you agree, um, give us a clap or a thumbs up. If you disagree, a thumbs down or a cry. You know, because you weep for the answer. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So people agree. All right. Yes. So. Um, yeah, so yeah, we are at the intersection of business tech and UX, right? And most people coming into product are coming into it coincidentally or not, 
from one of these three. Although you have, you know, outliers that come from somewhere else. So you have to ask yourself, which one is my strength? Now, most of the time, most of the people coming into program management are relatively junior. And because they're relatively junior, oftentimes they don't really have any of the three in spades. But you have those who come in from, so coming in from, the, but when you say coming in from business, what does that really mean? It, it doesn't mean that you, you've run a business yourself, right? But think about it this way. Someone who's been a banker, right? Um, and they've worked at Access Bank for the last seven years. They are coming to product management from the side of business because they now have the domain expertise that would make them a great fintech product manager, for example, right? Or, you know, someone coming a lawyer is a perfect, you know, legal tech PM, for example. I'm just giving you some random examples. So if you, in your past life, you had something you were doing and it, ha it so happens that that thing that you were doing um, is a field in which tech is actually trying to innovate. You are coming in as a domain expert. And therefore, as a domain expert, you have something to bring to the table as a product manager. And so what you will do is practically tailor your applications to those businesses, those startups or tech businesses that would need your specific domain expertise. Uh, business, the intersection, that, that, that top circle, this, the business circle of product management is the one with the least competence in, um, in the Nigerian market. Um, you have a lot of teams of people, you have developers, you have designers, they've understood this, but oftentimes part of why we struggle to build great product is there just simply isn't enough domain expertise. So that's one way to make yourself stand out is by understanding from your past professional life, what are the things that you have learned? What are the places where you have some expertise? And then asking yourself, are there people building in that space? And could I make myself a product manager that brings to the table domain expertise in that space while I learn the technical side and the user experience side um, over time? You know, so so that's one way. Another way is through that. You, you may not have any of the of the three, right? But remember that the other thing. Oh, I'm seeing someone here. Choma says she's coming from software testing. Brilliant software testing. That's strong, both on the what we call the tech or the engineering side, engineering constraints. You, all, you have a very strong understanding of that. You also have a strong understanding of user experience design even though you may not be aware of it but because you've been you know hand watching that you, you've had a front row seat in that so you're coming in actually with two out of three and that's a very good place to be in right and then apart from these three things right there so you can so you know you, you have this um the concentric circle right the event diagram then there's something above it and something below it um there's sorry one sec above it there is strategy and below it there is ops so this is what a product manager does right but a product manager job also involves strategy making those decisions about what do we build how are we going to what are we going to do next how do we grow the more strategic you are, the better you are at the job. And so if you can highlight that in your past life, you have been a strong strategic operator. You've been called upon in, in for key decision making, in what, whatever that area is, you can make that point, make that argument and show how that you've been making strategic decisions that move a business forward or move some other type of product forward. That, that helps you stand out in product management because not a lot of people have that experience. And then below the ops layer, look, it doesn't matter if you know what to do and you have the strategic vision, if you can't get it done, um, the product never gets built. 
And so that's why people who come from project management have an edge sometimes in product management. Because you know all those skill sets of getting five people who don't like each other to sit down together to build something together and move it, right? That's part of the product manager's job. In fact, that's one of the core parts of the product manager's job. And in fact, as a junior PM coming in entry level, that's usually the thing that you end up doing. Because guess what? Oga, the CEO, you're doing Oga driven development. Oga says, remove your eye from strategy, come on, body, that's mine, right? Then the senior PMs are here arguing over this. Here's what's left for you as an entry level PM. They've told you, they've put everything on the Kanban. Your own is to be pushing things forward from to do to done, uh, from to do to pending to done. Your own is to be calling, um, you know, Choma the QA and saying how far. Your own is to be calling Andy the, the engineer and shouting how far. There's a lot of project management at that early stage. And so if you can show that you stood out, I'm sorry, that you have that in speeds, that's another way to stand out. I, I hope that ans answered your question, uh, Timito. Yes, thank you very much. Sure, sure. So I'm um, sorry, I'm just getting a message. You know, Moses, I said I, want to cl I was going to close yeah. early, but, 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 I'm just finding out that I don't have to. So I'm, I can take many like I can thank you so much, so much for that, Andy. Thank you so much. So we still have about fifteen minutes of your time. So are there? And thank you so much for all these explanations. Uh, the alpha guy. <laughs> so yeah. Um, any more questions? While I'm waiting for hands to be raised, I actually have a follow-up question. Cool. Um, to your very first question. Um, and that would be that. Um, you said that um, during interviews, we are there as interviewees to both learn from the company and to let the company know the kind of stuff that we carry. So um, what ideal question would you say that I as an interviewee can ask you as, an, as my interviewer during an interview call? What questions do you think I should ask you that would say, oh, ah, this guy knows what he's doing? How do you like your coffee, sir? No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, no, I'm absolutely kidding. No, no, I think what I love to hear, I love to hear um, from a candidate that the candidate wants to understand how we work, what our approach to work is, where I want to build our product, what our goal, our goal is, what our ambition is. Uh, so let me be real with you um because i don't believe in giving you textbook advice i believe that the reason you're not reading a textbook or going online is you're coming to me is because you want the the cocoa the actual contextual advice so you're talking to a the average nigerian hiring manager especially if you're talking to the founder right um how do i put this about founders uh founders are in love with their startups, right? In love with their product, right? And the founder is basically like, this is my baby, and I want to make sure you love my baby as long as much as I love my baby. Now, obviously, you're just meeting the baby, so there's no way in hell that you love the baby as much as you know the parent. But at that point, if you're asking questions that that speak to the heart of why the founder is building what they're building you get their attention so you're asking them for example about what they view the mission of the company as and i don't mean the mission as okay the mission statement but what at the core is the fundamental change that the company wants to make that's one question another question that the founders founders like is um what are the current goals from the outside we you can like i, I you know somebody will say like i do kind of to say look looking at the company from the outside we all think we know what the company is trying to achieve but in reality 
what is the main goal, you know, the main short-term or mid-term goal that you're trying to achieve right now? Uh, you know, that's a great question to ask the CEO, the founder. Um, if you're interviewing with the head of product, uh, a good question to ask the head of product is, like, what are our North Stars, right? Like, that's a practical question that lets this person know that, look, hey, look, you're already thinking in terms of the job on the table that needs to get done. Um, a good question to ask is, um, how do we structure the work day to day? How do we organize work? Um, how do we decide what to build? And, um, you know, how is that assigned? A practical question like that, you know, serves to let them know that this person is here to work. Now, if you're interviewing for a non-Nigerian company, especially a Western company, um, and the first question was North Star. The questions you will ask are a bit different. Um, and as all your friends, even with someone like me, you know, the questions you will, you, you will ask are very different. What I want to see is um, that this person is, is thoughtful and is considering everything. Um, I want to hear questions like, um, how much autonomy um, am I given? Uh, how much autonomy, uh, you know, does the, does our working system um, call for? Uh, because I'm looking for people who are looking for autonomy, and most people are, most, most Western employers are. Um, you can ask questions like, um, again, about our style of work ask questions about the culture, the work culture. What do we value? What do you value in employees? What do you value in a new team member? Then a golden question to always ask is, um, what, if, what, is the, what do you view success, me succeeding in this role? What would it look like three years from now? What impact would I have made on the company if I am successful in this role? That lets this person know that look, you are thinking long term about your work about as a function as a factor in improving the company. So these are some of the things. Thank you so much for that, Andrew. Um, I'm sure a lot of people have also learned one thing or the other from from that um so we are rounding up we have just about nine minutes left so i i'm still allowed to take at least one more question actually so um yeah let me know if you have any question you can use the comment section you can raise your hand otherwise we'll meet again same time in two weeks time So I will be waiting for your question. Oh, so I, I am seeing a question in the chat. Sorry, Trauma. You know, when you asked you asked a question earlier on, the pop-up didn't show me everything. So you're saying in your case, you're coming from um QA and uh you, you see transferable skills between both rules, but how can I translate how can you translate those skills into value? So let's start by is Trauma here? I, I think she we've lost her. Yes, I am. I am. I'm here. Oh, awesome. Awesome. So, Chema, let's just start by asking, let me start by asking you, what are the transferable skills you're seeing? Let's start there. Uh, I Chema, are you there? I Chema, you can unmute you too. Hello, Gemma. I don't think she can hear yeah, I think we may have lost her this time. Okay. Um, okay, move me. You can go next. Hello, good evening. Okay, this is for people that want to be technical pro um, pro product managers. So tech is very broad, right? There's data, DevOps, software engineering, and all that. So for someone that wants to be a technical product manager, what is the first thing that you you would suggest that they should learn. 
Okay, so is, is this person already whether a developer or the, you know whether an engineer or is this just a, a, someone who's already just a, a PM that now wants to become a technical PM? Yes, a PM that wants to become a technical PM. Awesome. Okay. So um I think the the hard and difficult answer is learn how to code. That's that's the hard answer, right? But you don't have to learn how to code, right? So the very first step to becoming a technical PM is having deeper interactions with your developers and your engineers as a non-technical PM. So what does that mean? You go a step further in understanding, um, okay, things like how are your engineers making decisions about um, estimation? What tools are they using? Um, what even if you're not learning the code, right? You're not, you, 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 you okay, so no, so let me, let me start again, sorry. Start by having a very rudimentary understanding of one programming language, preferably the programming language that your that is being used in your stack on your, in your, your, your backend, right? Understand that programming language, even if you can't use it. So what I mean by understanding it is understand the high level concepts of how that programming language works that allows you to have some types of conversations with your engineers allows you to ask them questions about okay um so this particular thing that you're building now um when they now start to talk to you about you know the different like say modules or microservices that they are having to build to to get a feature to work you are able to somehow even if you don't fully understand it you have a vague idea of what they mean it's it's sort of like for those of you who own a car you know you don't know how to fix your car engine right but if your mechanic if your car is making a particular noise and your mechanic is telling you uh not the headlights or not the bushing you will know that the mechanic is full of crap because even if you can't fix the car you know what what goes where right it's the same thing if you know enough about the programming language or about programming languages in general and about the concepts of building say microservice architecture or things like that it allows you to have conversations where you are not illiterate you're able to understand what the de developers are saying that's the first core step the next step is now to keep having those conversations and asking the developers to get a bit more technical with you when they're answering your questions when they're asking you and then also not being ashamed or afraid to ask them for clarifications about things. What that, what that does is you start to develop an understanding of what are the things that an engineer takes into account. How do they figure out feasibility? How do they figure out what to build to implement the thing that they need to implement? Um, what types of things are different? So over time, you know, okay, this is what I'm asking them to build now. Hmm. It will mean for them they will have to implement a you know a, a binary search tree or they will need to implement some sort of you know you know queue or things like that okay from past experience i know that that will maybe require these types of api calls okay from past experience i know that they will always have difficulty because of abcd so you start to have this high level understanding of of of, of the different smaller black boxes that make up the black box of the code over time then you now have to start seeing which parts of this whole technical thing do you have a more natural affinity for understanding some will be hard for you to understand some will be easier for you to understand then you now start saying okay it wants it easier to understand should i now start 
focusing more and more of, on understanding those ones until I'm very, very deep there. That's kind of how you go over time to sort of become a more technical PM. Um, I was fortunate. I came, I was a, 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 an engineer before I became a product manager. So that was relatively easy for me. But I work with a lot of PMs who have become technical PMs um, coming from scratch. And that's kind of the progression they make. The ones who are brave, the bravest of them actually start coding and use that. Even if, yeah, I mean, yeah, you're gonna, even if what you write is rubbish code that can never like be commercially viable, that's not the point. You're not there to try and become an engineer. You're there to try and know enough about what the engineer does to be able to have an educated conversation with the engineer. That's the real core of being a technical peer. Thank you so much for that. Again, Andrew, well, we really, really enjoyed your time today. I, I know uh, that have one minute, but I, I'm seeing one hand. I can take one question. <laughs> okay okay please this will be the last question for today's session so hi Igwe. please can unmute sorry it's, it's still choma it's not a question my laptop was bad when you, you called oh, me wow. okay okay Welcome cool. back. yes so do i still go ahead to answer your question yes please go ahead go ahead go ahead um okay so as a qa i have been able to garner skills like um being user focused because i'm testing from the from the point of a user i'm not testing from the point of the stakeholders building the products i understand user pain points and i know that that skill is very important for a pm to have i also have communication skills because i'm collaborating with engineers all the time i'm relating issues i'm finding so i have to be as as precise and concise as possible so testing purposes what's important what's not important critical bugs that needs to be fixed i also know that that's important for a pm to have because you if you're working with timelines and deadlines and you cannot possibly do everything at the same time so you have to know how to plan then attention to details the things that not everyone will see qas have to see it because you you have to build a product that is very efficient and you know that can stand up to other products out there in the market. So a PM should have skills like this too. So now talking about this, I'm actually even, I'm, I'm sort of answering myself on how I can answer questions like this in an interview, yes, set, right. interview setting. Yeah, so. And that's why, I, I, that's I, why I asked you to do this. That, that's exactly why I asked you to do this, because if you already see, because once you said in your chat, I see the transferable skills between both roles. I, when I read that, I was like, well, that's more than half the battle. Once you can see the transferable skills, it's all about talking about those transferable skills. Now, what you said to me is you are customer centric because you've been testing from the POV of the customer. And so that means you are bringing the most important skill of a product manager, which is to be the voice of the customer in the room. Um, when products are being built. You talk about communication skills, you know, because you are able to, you are communicate and you see, and be clear about this, it's, it's, it's communication skills are not uniform. There is it's something special about being a QA. Being a QA means you speak engineer, which is a different language from English. Engineers do not speak English, they speak engineer. You speak engineer, and you also speak business because the thing with the QA, at least you, you speak the product side of business because what you do every day is you take product requirements, con you transform them into test, into, into test cases, you build the, the code to test the software and you're comparing the output to your test cases. And what that means is you are used to a type of two-way communication that is mostly missing in most teams, and which is why there is a breakdown in production because the engineers can speak business and product and the product and business people can speak engineer. But as a QA, you can speak all three. And that's really the heart of the value proposition of a QA 
becoming a product manager. And one of one of the best PMs I've worked with. Um, he was um he worked on my team when I was head of product at Babangona, and I transitioned him into product just for this specific reason. And um there isn't anybody trying to hire you as a product manager hearing that you're coming from QA and that you're able to articulate it this way that if they were smart, wouldn't hire you. All right. Thank you, Andrew. Lucky you, Chioma, actually. <laughs> I remember, I, I, I remember really that a couple of interviews, um, rooms I've entered, I was asked if I have QA experience or if I, if I can test websites. <laughs> so lucky you, lucky you. Um, so with that, we've come to the end of today's interview prep session. Um, just a number of announcements. In two weeks' time, we'll be starting a series with Andrew on um, interviews, basically. And yeah, we also have a number of programs coming up. On Thursday, we have a webinar. On Saturday, we do our weekly check-in calls where you can come and rant connect with people of like mind. And yeah, please look out for our social media channels, Twitter, Instagram, even YouTube. We announce our upcoming programs and you can also join our Slack community where there are thousands of like minds, actually. So um, thank you again, Andrew. Please, let's give Andrew a round of applause. Let's send our loves. It's been an amazing session. Um, also, you can access this recording on our YouTube channel. I pinned it in the chat. Just type people in product uh, community, people in product, uh, at people in product on YouTube. You find us there. So thank you so much, everyone. Um, thank you so, so much, Andrew. I would reach out, we'll reach out to you to, okay, Andrew was going to say something. Yes, yes, yes. Before we go, let me just also say that, um, so I work for Founders Factory Africa. Like I said, I'm the head of product. What we do, we're a venture capital firm. We invest in startups, early stage startups at the very, very earliest, but we don't just invest. After we invest, we support the startup directly to build their product, um, grow their customer base, um, get the right partnerships um, and, and hire the right talent and all these other things that they need to get to the next level. And um, part of what we now, um, we've done in that regard is we now have a partnership with Sandbox by people in product. And so, um, if you're enrolling in Sandbox, it also will give you um, access to me and my other product people. We're going to be directly tutoring some Sandbox um, 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 members. And what we're going to now do is shortlist some of them for placement, job placement with our startups, right? So um, please join Sandbox. It's something we're trying to do to just grow the ecosystem and put great product people into great startups. Thank you so much, Andrew. Thank you so much for that. Um, so with that, we come to the end of the session. See you guys in two weeks time. Please join our other community programs, bringing the best of the best actually. So till next time guys. Please don't leave or share the link to join sandbox, please. <laughs>